Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. So today is the sixth day of the Holy Land tour. So you can see this beautiful view. So this is the sunrise view from our hotel room. So since we visited so many places, so let's see some of the highlights. This is Hebrew language. So the first place we visited was in Karim, which is the birthplace of John the Baptist. At the entrance of the gate only we saw one Korean group. So they already visited the place and they were returning. So now we are going inside the church. So this is the church of the St. John which is in Inkarim, Jerusalem. So on the walls you can see so many prayers, actually all these are the same prayers written in different languages of the world. Inkarim is a charming hillside village famed for its centuries old holy sites. These include the church of St. John the Baptist containing a cave said to be the St. John's birthplace. The word in Karim is even mentioned in Bible, Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 1 and Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 14. Zechariah, where was he living with Elizabeth, Elizabeth, and here the birthplace of John the Baptist. Normally, when Zechariah entered to the Holy of the Holy of the Temple, over there he was appeared by the angel. He going to have a child, yes, through a relationship between man and woman, but he doesn't believe her. Zachariah because he was old person and Elizabeth she was old woman but by the grace of God yes when he visited his population by the angel he gave her the possibility to have the son and no can talking till the son born and wants to call him John yes and this is happening relationship and was birthplace of John the Baptist in this area hallelujah so let's go and see a small cave inside the church The time when we visited the church, it was under renovation, so that's why it looks like this. But now I will show you the cave, the main place where they believe to be the birthplace of John the Baptist.
After this, we are going to Bethany, which is the hometown of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And there only we are going to visit Lazarus tomb also. So now we are going towards the church where they built church in memory of Mary, Lazarus and Martha. So you can see the pathway looks very beautiful and all these are the olive trees. Finally we reach the place so you can see here all these are the stones which they preserved and kept here. And just at the opposite of the church is the tomb of Lazarus. But on top of that you can see there is a mosque. So at the ground floor is the tomb of Lazarus. So we are going to visit that tomb also. So right now we are in Bethany and this is the place where they build church in memory of Mary, Lazarus and Martha. So this place is supposed to be the house of Mary, Lazarus and Martha. And in this household of Bethany, the Lord Jesus Christ experienced the family spirit and friendship. And for this reason, the Gospel of John states that he loved to spend time here. So first let's go inside the church. So here you can see many small small patches which is of mosaic floors and they have just preserved all these things. So this is supposed to be the entry gate of Lazarus tomb before but after that they uh, sealed this place because the mosque is at the top floor so we have the another way to go towards the tomb. So here they have kept map together with the information of the first church, second church and the third church which they built in different centuries. So this is the first church. And this one is the second church. You can see the picture as well as the map. And they have preserved this mosaic floor of the second church. So inside this place is a wine press. So come let's see. A wine press is a device used to extract juice from crushed grapes during winemaking. It is believed that this wine press belongs to Mary, Lazarus and Martha. So 
so after this you can see we are going to the tomb of Lazarus uh, this is what I was telling you that we are actually on the Mount of Olives and we came to the other side where Jesus ascended on okay. from the on from the Mount of Olives and we are on this side and this side and that side, this is a Palestinian area. See the wall over there on the top? See the wall? So yes. that's the wall that made the difference between the Palestinian and this and the Israeli land over there. So because of that, people cannot come here this way. They have to come all the way from the other side. So now we are going inside the tomb of Lazarus and the steps are very steep and very narrow so you can see the tomb is the purported site of the miracle recorded in the gospel of john in which jesus raised lazarus from the dead the site sacred to both christian and muslim has been identified as the tomb of the gospel account since at least the fourth century a.d The tomb of Lazarus is a traditional spot of pilgrimage, located in the biblical village of Bethany on the southeast slope of the Mount of Olives, some 2.4 km east of Jerusalem. So we need to go deep down from inside, only one person can pass by at once. After visiting the tomb of Lazarus, now we are heading towards Jericho and we will also visit the Mount of Temptation where Jesus was tempted. This is the sea level, so now we are going more down below the sea level because there we are going to visit the Dead Sea also. When Jesus tells the well-known parable of the Good Samaritan, he situates it on the road to Jericho. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hand of robbers who striped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. So all these are the Negev Desert, so we are also passing by the Negev Desert, uh, which is near Dead Sea. Negev word is derived from the Hebrew root dry land. So due to the irrigation facility, you can see greeneries even in the desert. 
The Negev Desert is located in modern-day Israel, expanding nearly 4,700 square miles in the small country. It is a semi-desert region of southern Israel. So now we have entered into the Jericho city, so we can see Jericho, the oldest city in the world, 10,000 years. So now we will visit the Mount of Temptation, but we will not go at the top of the mount, but we will just see from the Jericho city. The Mount of Temptation sides 350 meters, 1150 feet above sea level, in the middle of the desert extending between Jerusalem, Jericho and Jordan River. Its name refers to the time Jesus allegedly went off to a mountain to pray and was tempted by the devil. We can see the temptation of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 11. So what happens at the Mount of Temptation? Ancient Christian tradition identifies it as the location of the temptation of Jesus described in the New Testament Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, in which he said that from a high place the devil offered Jesus rule over the all kingdoms of the world. So after seeing the site of Mount of Temptation from the Jericho city, now we are going for lunch. So this is the place where we are going to have lunch.
so our restaurant was just next to the place jericho city from where we can go to see the jericho wall but we didn't visit that place so i'm just showing you the model of the jericho wall and the jericho city So this is the model they made of the Jericho city and the walls. Commonly known as the oldest city in the world, Jericho is an important historical, cultural and political center located northwest of the Dead Sea. The city is perhaps best known from the biblical history of a great victory over its Canaanite citizens by the Israelite leader Joshua. If you want to go inside and see then we need to have ticket and all so we are not going there. And there is also an option for cable car, so this will go to the Mount of Temptation. The Dead Sea, also known by other names, is a salt lake bordered by Jordan to the east and the West Bank and Israel to the west. It lies in the Jordan Rift Valley and its main tributary is the Jordan River. So why the sea is called Dead Sea? It is because of its high salinity means no microscopic aquatic organisms such as fish or water plants can live in it.
Why the Dead Sea is so famous? The Dead Sea is considered the world's most ancient spa, and modern science proves why. It is one of the saltiest bodies of water in the world, with 34% salinity, making it nearly nine times saltier than regular ocean water. Dead Sea mud is also considered a great medicine for the skin. So you can see some of them applying over their bodies. So you can see here, we group of 52 people, we all are uh, floating and having fun in the Dead Sea. How long can we swim in the Dead Sea? The high salt content will burn if it gets into the eyes. The recommended amount of time to float in the Dead Sea is 20 minutes or less. Staying too long can cause dehydration. And after floating for less than 15 minutes, take shower also here. 